Okay, so something that I had done a few years back was I had attempted to actually develop my own video game. Now, I wasn't going to dump the amount of time necessary into it to develop something with like Unity or the Unreal Development Kit or anything like that. But I wanted to just create something. And the RPG Maker seemed like a good option because I am big fan of the RPG genre and the Japanese RPG genre which the RPG maker is designed to produce so I decided to give that a shot and the thing that I developed was the game Stormbreak now I ran into some difficulties while developing this aside from a loss of interest and a number of other things which slowed down development I unfortunately suffered in the beginning of 2022 a hard drive crash now, I did not have a lot of the development um, materials that I had backed up, and a lot of stuff went missing, including the original project file which I was using. Now, <coughs> the version of RPG Maker I was using at the time did not automatically back up to Steam servers the way earlier versions did, and besides backing up tended to take a while, so I was kind of being reckless with the way that I did this. So a lot of my project data ended up being lost when the hard drive crashed. I had also lost a lot of the other materials that I had been using for the development, like uh, asset files, as well as a ledger of licenses that I had had, which having lost, it makes it difficult for me to keep track of what, what licenses and stuff that I had for different assets and music and graphics and all that kind of stuff in the game, which would make it difficult for me to sort all that kind of stuff out and distribute it later. What I did find, however, was I did have a backup of the Stormbreak, that's the name of the game here, Stormbreak project file located on another hard drive that I had sitting around. Now, it wasn't one that was up to date in a lot of ways i hadn't actually it was an older backup one that didn't have everything that i had done in fed developing the game it wasn't as complete as the version that i had lost but it did have quite a bit of the stuff that i had done so i've come to the realization that i'm never going to finish this game so i decided hell why not just show here what i do have so we're going to go jump into the game Stormbreak. Now, keep in mind that this was a game that's development was canceled during Alpha. So it's very incomplete. It is very unfinished. And it will abruptly end at a certain point. So judge it harshly if you want. It is kind of garbage in a lot of ways. But it wasn't going to stay that way had I finished it. So the game starts out with a bit of a monologue from a character, and it just sort of thrusts you into this. Now, I definitely would have had a bit of an intro going into it, not just having the character appear there, along with a monologue. Although it's not entirely clear, the monologue is coming from a character that's not the person we're looking at here. Oh, look at this. I can wander over top of the gravestones. So, we have incomplete graphics here. The sprite we're looking at on the screen does not resemble the character portrait that appears next to dialogue. That was definitely something I was going to fix, but creating character sprites was something that I had not put, not put a whole lot of emphasis on while I was developing the game. What I wanted mostly to do was to get that kind of stuff done about as far as was needed to progress with um, scripting out like the story of the game and creating the environments. Now this was actually the first environment I created for the game and you can tell that it is absolute shit. The ground just has this irritating repeating texture. It's a, I guess maybe I was thinking at the time that I wanted you to have to search around to find your way through here. But so much of this environment looks the same, and you have things like this little doorway here, which 
leads nowhere that might be irritating for a first time player that doesn't know how to get through this area it might be irritating for them to explore around plus there are a lot of weird little seams in the environment like right here along the top of the lava which definitely doesn't look right this was something in area which i understood at the time i was going to have to completely recreate and i feel like i would have to rescript all of the dialogue and stuff that happens in the scene as well so we go up here and we find some members of our party now over here we have annabelle then <laughs> god she's wearing a different color dress uh her character's portrait is wearing a different color dress than her sprite is although she is actually using a version of a sprite i actually created for her it's actually an out dated okay her character portrait okay it's been years since i did this so maybe you'll forgive me for not having that good of a memory of what happened what i was thinking at the time of what i was doing but the character portrait is a bit of an outdated one in comparison to her character sprite her character sprite with the blue dress was actually what i created later on it's kind of terrible too that her character portrait is covering up her sprite like i i definitely needed to put more work into this it wouldn't have taken much effort actually to just drag her sprite over to the middle of the screen so she wouldn't be covered up but it was something that i wasn't really thinking about at the time and i may have actually created this environment and this scene prior to implementing the character portraits so you know it was my freshman effort i would have if i start this game over redeveloping it from scratch it's definitely not a mistake i would have made so it's really actually is intentional for you to not have any context as to what's going on right now so what you did was what i did was i dropped you into a scene which we are later going to discover is actually something that happens at the end of the game. And some, and in some way, the entire game is sort of a flashback. So we're at the end of the game, and we're going to do something here, and then it's going to jump back all the way to the beginning of the game, and we're going to start playing through it through. Now, there is a few wrinkles in that concept. It's not quite as I described. But maybe I'll get into the details of that later. Oh my god, I don't even have a freaking name for this guy. And his character portrait doesn't look like his sprite. I have two different versions of the character. And he doesn't even say a lot. Okay, so this guy's name is Duke. Um, his name is actually... Well, Duke is just a nickname. His name is Edward Bellamy. But I called him Duke. Uh, okay, so the... Honestly, I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering which version of this character is the more up-to-date version. Whether the character sprite or the character portrait was the up-to-date version. Um, Ambrose here, our player character, his character portrait was probably the first character portrait I created. And I never updated it. So that's why it looks a little bit cheaper compared to a lot of the other character portraits. It also has a little bit of a thicker um, filter over it to give it a bit of a like a painted look. Like, okay, so for a Duke here, it's a little bit under. Uh, I used a computer generated, a, a CG model, 3D model I made in Blender. And then just sort of dressed him in clothes and then stuck him in the scene and I'd created the character sprites the same way but I applied a filter over there to give him a kind of uh, painted look now it's a little bit underplayed there now with Annabelle here it's overly thick her character portrait is blown up also so it's too low a resolution for the size of the portrait and also like makes her look taller than Duke which isn't true Duke is supposed to be gigantic Okay, so we have our another our third or fourth character over here. Um, look how bad that character portrait is. Oh my god. 
I definitely should have put some more effort into creating this guy's... Should have recreated this guy's character portrait. And I'm still using the sprite, as I was trying to say before, but never got to it. His sprite is actually just sort of a stock graphic that I uh, licensed from Pioneer Valley Games. And, it, I mean, it, it served its purpose, and I just never recreated his sprite. I honestly, I didn't put enough respect into the character of Ambrose as I should have. I should have put more effort into his character, but I was intending to go back and redo his graphics later. Okay, uh, so as we'll find out in a moment, or maybe it's not quite as obvious as I thought it was, the character that is providing the monologue that we fade to black and then we see the monologue is in fact not um, Ambrose here. Now, Ansel, jeez, oh his head is covering up Annabelle's sprite again. <laughs> Ansel is the character that is monologuing the scene. He didn't even turn the face Ambrose there. <laughs> and he's barefoot, too. Look at his sprite. He's barefoot, and Duke is barefoot, too. When he went about Annabelle's barefoot. <laughs> Everybody's barefoot. That should have been a question. You can just accept it? Question mark. Again, you're not supposed to have context for what's going on here. What they're talking about. Although that is a little frustrating for the player. So this was a mistake on my part. Okay, she stepped over. Now she's visible. <laughs> okay, I can definitely see that when we're looking at two different um, character models for the two different character models for the character of Annabelle, it's not just a different color with the dress, because the version of the character model that I created for the sprite is perhaps a is a newer one. The older one used for the character portrait has absurdly long hair. Like, like ridiculously long. And that was part of her character design. I wanted it to seem oddly long hair. Like it reaches down to her ankles. Completely impractical. The character sprite, however, it just, it goes down. It, it's, a lo it's long hair, don't get me wrong. But it's not, it's like down to her elbows, not to her ankles. And it was, and like her hair is all over the place. It hangs over her face. It's everywhere. Of course, you can't really tell quite how long her hair is because the character portrait is a low detail one and like you can't see her back. <laughs> See, even, even Ansel doesn't know what the hell's going on. And this is an awkward scene, because they stumble across... It just fades into another scene, and they stumble across this woman. This character here is using entirely um, stock character footage. Uh, footage, uh, Sprites and graphics and that kind of stuff. This was not intended to be what she ended up looking like. This is just stock assets. Yep, uh, yep, Ansel's and Annabelle, everybody's barefoot. All the stock assets have shoes, but all the stuff I created are barefoot. <laughs> oh my god, that was a rough transition. <laughs> 
Okay, we're getting into our first battle. N lie. It just says lie emerged. <laughs> Look at my character sprites. And, and oh my god, the character portrait for Ansel is... Ansel, uh, Ambrose is... Jeez, they both shouldn't have names that start with an A. It's too small. Look at that. I didn't scale it up properly. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, just look at my character portraits. They are all just using stock assets, and they all look identical. And they're all naked, too. <laughs> well, maybe they're not naked. They're, they're wearing underwear, but they're... I was definitely going... To... I had actually had earlier versions of the game where I had character assets created for each one of these characters. And they swung swords and punched and did all that kind of stuff. I can't quite remember why, but I ended up replacing them with these, intending to replace these with newer versions. It might have been that I switched game engines. So there's different versions of the RPG Maker. There was Ace, M Ace, I think the first version that I started creating the game was called. And then they released a version called MV, I think, later. And I was able to carry the project forward into MV. And that necessitated some changes with the graphics. And some of them I didn't complete, so that's why you saw, like, uh, Ambrose's character portrait was out of scale. And it'll happen a few other times in the game, too, where some of the assets are out of scale. Okay, so we'll see something else here. It I don't think it's actually going to... Uh, Play out in this battle because this is a scripted fight but over on the right side of the screen you see an energy bar now energy sort of kind of works the way MP would work in a lot of other games or AP or whatever uh, sort of like magic points only in this game every single character action regardless of whether it's a physical attack or magic attack or something like that will use energy hold on I'll get to it in a minute gonna let them talk <laughs> the Duke is dead right now, but his character portrait is still standing up. <laughs> okay, so the energy will be consumed with every single attack, regardless of what it is. And the idea behind it was I wanted to force the player to sort of meter their attacks. So you wouldn't just stand there, and even if you could easily overpower an opponent, you wouldn't be able to just simply spam attacks. Like a power, physically powerful character would have to would have to juggle the energy meter just like a mage would. Now it, the energy gets consumed with every attack, so I added the special, we added the rest command, which operates sort of like a defense command in a lot of other games, where you will take less damage if you are hit while defending. But it will also slowly regenerate both your health and your rest meter, your energy meter. But unfortunately, I didn't spend a lot of time working with it because, like, well, I mean, I never finished the game. So it's not balanced that well. And you'll run out of energy even on weaker enemies. So it drags out a lot of fights where you gotta fight run out of energy, then rest to regain your energy, then continue fighting 
to burn the energy and just keep going back and forth. It, I didn't have it working well yet, but I thought it was a good idea. This is a scripted fight though, so we have a lot of dialogue going on. The character portrait should definitely be smaller than Annabelle's is. Oh, you missed on that one, Annabelle. Up, oh, she's dead too, but she's still standing. <laughs> Excellent hit. Okay, so... What I just did was, he finally executed his rest command, and he regained some health, although he was at maximum health, and regained a little bit of energy. Oh, he missed. Actually, Ambrose isn't high enough of a level to damage her. Just, it's a balance issue that I didn't fix. Not that it matters, because it's a scripted fight. The graphics are a little muddy because of the floor texture is ugly, <laughs> but she just sort of died. <laughs> and you can tell, you can't really see him that well, but over towards the left side of the screen, Duke is dead. But for some reason, I'm not using the proper sprite for him, so he looks different. <laughs> He's wearing armor now for some damn reason. It's, it's, it's a stock graphic. Annabelle was supposed to be unconscious there, or, and she was just revived, but her, again, since I didn't have all the graphics in place, her being unconscious graphic and her standing there graphic looked the same. And the recovery spell doesn't work on Duke because he's truly dead. So that was more of a preface there, and reached Chapter 1. Now, really only Chapter 1 was called Stormbreak. There were supposed to be four chapters. Um, Stormbreak, The Darkness, Resistance, and Fate were the four chapters. Now, I really only made it as far as The Darkness, as far as developing of this game went. So we're going to end the game at that point. Alright, so we are actually going to spend a large portion of the game playing as Ansel. Although, a couple of other characters will take prominence during other parts of the game. The way I have it set up is there's actually like a trio of protagonists that the game takes place from the perspective of. You have Ansel here, who is the first character we are going to play as. And then we will have, uh, there was Ambrose that we already saw, and the third character will be introduced shortly. God, this is an ugly environment. I'd read the I'd recreated this environment a few times. I tried making it into something of a maze during the first time I created it. 
But I figured, like, why the hell put a person through navigating around in that if there wasn't really going to be anything to do here? So I just sort of simplified it and turned it into what it is now. But then, like, it it's so empty. It's so big, wide, and empty for no reason. And we got these weird seams in the ground that don't make any sense. I would have had to have remade this. So what's been happening is all of what we experienced in the preface of this has been more of, is perceived by Ansel to have been a dream. There's a lot of people there that he didn't recognize, but he's unsure if it was real or not. But what has been happening in the real world over the past several days has there's been this intense storm raining down, something which he has never seen before. And he has found himself trapped in this sort of hideout up in the mountains. There's a lot of rain coming down, and he's been unable to leave. So there is this character named Autumn here, and... It's sort of going to be detailed later on in the game, but I'll just sort of bring it up now. That Autumn is not physically there. Now, I tried to make her sort of translucent. Her, both her sprite and her character portrait, they're both using stock graphics, by the way. You can see through them a little bit. Sort of imply that she has sort of an ethereal presence. She is somebody who has sort of been present in Ansel's life his entire life and it will sort of later be determined that she kind of resembles his mother although she will never claim to be his mother she has sort of been the only person in his life that has always been there for him although as time goes on like at times when he gets like more distraught and all that kind of stuff he sort of um doesn't trust her or rejects her or something like that. She's not... He doesn't understand what she is and she's not particularly forthcoming about her own nature. But the one thing that is uh, constant is that she shows a lot of care and love for him, almost like, like a motherly figure. So, it's referenced here that a character named Lily died in the storm. Now, Lily is Ansel's wife. And as the storms came down, she was here with him. Now, I, I'd written the script, edited it around a few times, so I'm a little bit unsure on what detail I settled on on whether she was here with him or not. But at one point, she was here with him and was washed away by the waters. And he was he went out to rescue her and was nearly killed and was knocked unconscious. And then when he, by the time he eventually, like, uh, regained consciousness, she was gone. And he couldn't find her in the storm. So he's been taking shelter in this 
cave. It's sort of like a cave made to be lived in. But she has been gone for a couple of days, and uh, he will just a just a not really a spoiler alert because it won't be brought up again. But he will never find her body. She is simply gone. So we've jumped to somewhere else. Oh my god, look at these character graphics. Oh my god, it's terrible. Okay, we're looking at Kismet here. She was another character, uh, the third main character of this story. And we see the incomplete nature of her graphics. Now, the sprite is using a stock graphic and the character portrait is using the graphic that I had created. And I can tell that even the character portrait is not a complete one. I had recreated this character's design several times, and this was definitely not the final design. You could tell her portrait doesn't have the kind of um, illustrated filter applied over it. So it's it wasn't even set up properly to be included in the game. Also, the portrait is too large. She's not supposed to be a, an enormous person. Plus, like, her clothing is supposed to be torn and worn out and stuff, but the tears don't make any sense on, or like, look around her neck. It's, it's a disaster. This was definitely not the most up-to-date version of her character portrait. I had one that looked much better than this, but, you know, it's lost. So it's going to be pretty clear that Kismet is, aside from the fact that she appeared in a flash of light, she is from a faraway place, and she's just sort of appeared in this land in the middle of this storm. And she believes she was sent here by a god, which this temple is at least partially built to worship. Ah, stock character graphics. He's not an important character, so I was probably never going to update his graphics, but I did at least need to apply the sort of illustration filter over his graphics, his character portrait. This was just sort of slapped in here. It's sort of a it's sort of a subplot in this section of the game that a lot of people are under the belief that mages or other magic users were responsible for bringing the storm down upon them. Oh my god. Look at him. His character his character sprite is too small. It looks like a child. 
I know what happened. This was, I never updated this. I created this, um, I created this back in the older version of the engine and this never updated. So some of the graphics didn't carry through. Oh, a monster. Ha! <laughs> there was that tiny character portrait again. You know what? I should split this up into multiple episodes. I'll do it at the end of this scene. So we have a fight against the Storm Beast. And we have Kismet and Ambrose. Their character levels have been leveled down because we're not in the intro section of the game. We still are using those terrible character portraits. I didn't give the characters any special abilities. I had them in the game at an earlier point, but I sort of stripped them out because I needed to recreate them and just never re-implemented them. So all anybody can really do is attack. The Storm Beast isn't attacking them. Okay, so they ran out of energy. There's nothing in special, so all that either of these characters can do is rest. Now, if I remember my um, numbers correctly that I implemented, they in resting, they would regain like 5% of their health and 10% of their energy. Which doesn't scale very well when the characters are this level level. At least for the energy. So, I end up having to sit here and just rest a lot in order to continue to attack. Well, that fight took a little bit longer than it should have had to. But it wasn't too bad. That should have been a question mark. Do I have to worry about you? What's your... <laughs> What's yours? Fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, that little fucker's dead. <laughs> and we just sort of awkwardly transition to a house, an overly large house, and everybody's tiny. <laughs> oh my god. Where is Dirk? We're not even going to capitalize his name. <laughs> what a trashy name, Dirk. So, Kismet is being blamed for Dirk getting killed. Which, I mean, it wasn't really her fault. She didn't intend for him to die. But she is at least somewhat responsible for it. What the hell's Amy doing in this room? This, uh, okay, the character up there... She's using the character portrait I used for another character named Amy. Amy is definitely not in this scene, though. So what the hell is she doing here? 